Good afternoon, everyone. This is Robert Rayburn here at Life Pro Asset Management. It is November 13th of 2023. I'm glad everyone could join us today. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. And I do apologize for the lack of video uh, this week. I am recording here on the road. Um, so we're just going to go straight into the charts of this week and kind of go through three big things that we want to tackle. First, of course, is you know, oil had a big pullback over the last week and a half. Is that symptomatic of something more broad in nature as it relates to economic weakness or demand as it relates to oil demand? Or is that just simply a bull market in check back mode? So we want to go through that this week. In addition, three big things. Is the market bounce running out of gas? Number two, the bubble that continues to form at the very top of the market and names like Google, Tesla, Netflix, Facebook, et cetera. And then, of course, as we just mentioned, what happened to energy over the past week or so. So as we look at the stock market and where we're at with that current correction is that we continue to see a series of lower highs and lower lows. So this market correction began in late July, early August. We had a low bounce off the 100 day moving average. We established a lower high. Then we, uh, then we had a big sell-off and then another lower high. And then, of course, a big lower low back to 200-day moving average. Counter trend rally into resistance before making a substantive low here uh, in late August and early November before getting this big short cover rally that we saw over the past week and a half until again we ran into this resistance. So we're at a very important point here in the market correction. Are we at a point that this short cover rally represented something more substantive, more durable in nature that is the beginning of a new bull market? Or are we gonna retest the lows? The truth is we don't know. And I think anyone who says they do know with conviction is probably somewhat misleading. What we do know is there's points of evidence that suggest that we're not necessarily out of that correction environment right at this point. So when we look at bounces like this, we want to see, is there panic buying, right? Is there panic buying both from long onlys and people who are short that lead to multiple days of what we call lopsided upside, upside to downside uh, movements in the stock market. In other words, the, the number of stocks that are moving up versus down are like seven, eight, nine to one, uh, multiple days in a row. So have we seen that this time around with this current bounce? And the truth is we really haven't. Um, when we, it, we look at uh, previous big bottoms in the market, we see these clusters that represented by these green pluses of large uh, what we call a large advanced decline ratio. So on any of these given days, uh, for every stock that goes down, there's nine stocks that go up and there's huge volume, right? There's like, I, I need to cover this short or I really need to get long because I'm going to fall behind the market really quick. That's what you see here during these big bottoms, right? That lead to these more elongated upside cycles. This time around, you've seen one cluster buy here, and that led to a failed rally. Same thing back in here in September, and then the market went down. Same thing again in October. And then again today, we've only had one day where we had that significant nine to one upside downside day. So last week's buying was impressive, uh, but it lacked the urgency. Um, daily advanced decline ratios have been relatively tepid. Uh, we've seen value stocks underperform. Energy is one of those sectors, consumer staples, telecom. Those areas have not performed that well. Uh, high PE growth names within tech have performed particularly well. So we think that's a relatively a uh, symptom of short covering. So we want to be careful. We just want more evidence is the bottom line message here. And a lot of this was triggered by the fact that the Federal, uh, the, uh, the Federal Reserve said that, oh, they may potentially pause on interest rates. Well, there's a difference between pausing and cutting rates. And we saw a big move down in rates, uh, 5% down to four and a half. And that triggered that short cover, especially in high, uh, high duration, high growth, high multiple, high valuation. In other words, expensive technology stocks. We saw a big bounce there. And now those are starting to run into a little bit of resistance. Um, and again, it was caused by this decline in rates. Now we're starting to see rates bounce. So again, this is a bull cycle, a check back in rates until either A, we resume uptrend or 
are we going to see rates move down to 4.2%? So that'll be a big tell over the next week or so. The other big thing is looking at that growth stock mirage, right? So the two largest weights in the S&P 500 right now, believe it or not, Apple and Microsoft make up 14.6% of the S&P 500, right? So when we're thinking of, okay, large growth stocks are outperforming value, yes, they are, but it, it really is more a symptom of everyone has been piling in to the seven largest stocks, otherwise known as FANG, Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Google, NVIDIA, uh, Tesla. So those names together are over 30% of the S&P 500. So people are really clamoring into those. So what's interesting is that large cap growth of value has been leadership. That's really a function of what we think is safety because the other 490 stocks on the S&P 500 have not really been performing that well. What's interesting, look at small cap growth relative to small cap value. That's beginning to break down. So what we actually think might happen here is that value leadership underneath the surface is slowly reasserting itself. So we want to go back and say, what are the percentage of stocks in an uptrend that are considered value? And are there certain pockets of growth that we can be invested in that where the valuations make sense? So energy remains, again, Percentage of stocks in a long-term uptrend, it's energy at 94.4%. Yes, last week was a nasty week. We know that. We experienced it. But the long-term uptrend, it still remains the technically and fundamentally, in our opinion, the most sound sector within the S&P 500. Technology has improved a lot, and we want to pick our spots in tech. But what's improved most in tech are the large-cap quality names, not necessarily the speculative corners of technology. So we want to be selective within tech. And then if we look at energy here relative to the S&P 500, uh, the RS declined quite a bit last week, but right back into support, right back into oversold levels. This is where we want to back up the truck, add a little bit more exposure to energy here at these price levels. And again, just a reminder, why are we so bullish on energy? Inventories keep dropping as supply dries up. That's a fact. Inventories have hit cycle lows. That's irrefutable. Number two, demand for oil continues to grow, right? So all this thought around demand uh, destruction across the Western economies and China, just not happening. And we're even seeing, by the way, where EV sales are beginning to flag because companies, A, can't meet uh, the, the economics around generating a... Uh, EV vehicle are not very good. And so we're, we're seeing a lot of manufacturers such as GM and Ford scale back their EV ambitions, or just quite simply, people can't afford it. Um, major swing supplier is the Middle East. Uh, you know, again, this is not the reason why we buy energy. In many cases, it ends up being a distraction. Nevertheless, I would not discount the fact that Iran and the US are continuing to have uh are running into each other in Iraq and in Syria, and we're actually seeing direct combat between U.S. and Iranian troops in those two countries. It's a very fluid situation. Um, but more importantly, the structural lack of long-term investment in the ground it takes five to 10 years of investment cycle to catch up supply to demand. We just haven't seen that in the energy space yet. We call it mining the gap, right? Demand continues to grow, supply Investment in new supply has not happened. It'll take years to catch up. And then lastly, merger and acquisitions throughout the space. Long-term, this is what we call the emergence of a new long-term bull market on a relative basis versus the S&P 500. After what was pretty much a 13-year bear market, we do think energy is starting to emerge in more of what we call a long-term bull market. We're entering phase two of that right now, in our opinion, driven by lack of investment, rising demand, compelling valuations and single digit multiples and what we call great power competition, right? So as China and the US compete globally against each other, there is gonna be a rush for strategic assets that both countries need both for civilian and military use. So quite summary here, don't chase. Be careful with short cover rallies. Everyone wants rates down. That kind of suggests to us the pain trades higher for interest rates, not lower. Uh, and just remember that oil inventories continue to plunge. So that's where we're at this week. 888-543-3776 uh, if you have any questions. Thank you again and have a fantastic week.